So inhibitors uh, are the major complications of patients with hemophilia and um, they will render factory replacement therapy inefficient and expose patients to high risk morbidity and mortality. So um, in order to uh, manage uh, the clinically relevant bleeding uh, disorders as well as uh, surgery in patients with high titer inhibitors, it's very challenging. So uh, bypassing agents are uh, being used as first line uh, treatment. Uh, these are uh, very efficient agents, but uh, they have major drawbacks such as um, the need for frequent dosing and uh, the lack of a reliable um, biomarker uh, for hemostatic efficacy um, and there is also a thrombotic risk. Uh, so the development of emicizumab uh, was a really a great breakthrough in uh, treatment, uh, prophylaxis treatment of hemophilia A patients with inhibitors and uh, it reduced bleeding rates uh, with just once or less weekly subcutaneous injection. But uh, the use of uh, emicizumab uh, doesn't um, lead to uh, very good hemostatic efficacy as compared to factor VIII. Uh, so there's uh, always a need for the use of uh, hemostatic uh, agents, uh, like bypassing agents. And it was showed that uh, the use of uh, bypassing agents concomitantly with emicizumab, particularly for APCCs, uh, induced uh, TMA problems and the thromboembolic uh, events. Um, in patients with acquired hemophilia A, uh, also that uh, mainly um, is seen in elderly patients, uh, the use of high doses bypassing agents, especially in patients with comorbidities, uh, induce increased risk of uh, arterial and the venous thrombotic. So there is a major need for the eradication of these inhibitors in order to facilitate the management of patients with hemophilia.